a city where shadows hide more than secrets. Two detectives step out of the fog, not to solve crimes, but to crack business cases. We dig into the numbers, dissect the strategy, and shine a light on what needs fixing. Welcome to Business Noir, where every episode is a new case, and every case has a story. Welcome back to another episode of Business Noir. Um, well, first of all, I uh, thanks for yeah. I would like to thank. We would like to thank to all the viewers and listeners of our podcast because uh, we were having a really nice and really useful uh, feedback from them. And thanks to them, and thanks to to all the comments and all the things that all the uh, opinions from from people. We are able to identify mistakes and different things that we we are doing because uh, and this is what it is is just try to improve every episode to give us better content and that's why uh, the other day we published on on social media Borja was saying like we are going to do an episode every 15 days because as he said very well is we want to focus on deliver the best content possible and we need to deal with a lot of stuff video edition problems that you don't see because that's the thing you don't see all the things we we're trying to do and we have mistakes and we have to do a lot of stuff uh, to deliver the, the really uh, really we we are like to have a very good content for you guys because we are very uh demanding with with ourselves we want to deliver the best things and, and the best side of us and it takes time and it takes error and mistakes and stuff. So thank you for, to everyone. And uh, we will still waiting for the same the same thing. I mean, comments, feedback. You can comment, you can say whatever you want. And uh, we will uh, take it as a constructive uh, way to grow. Um, well, we are Nico and Borja. Uh, we both are from Spain, but we've been living in Poland for quite some years. I mean, Borja has been a little bit longer myself. <laughs> a bit longer, um, but um, we are, we get in common because we were looking for the same thing. Mm -hmm. We were looking for to help people and to help people to grow, to people to to become a better version and with our knowledge. Because we like to share, we like to talk. Also, we like to talk a lot. I know that I say it all the time, but it's true. It's true. We, and I think is is a good thing. We like to talk, we but we like to discuss. What is the most important thing in this podcast is yeah. to to discuss things. Yeah, and we like to to share our skills with other people, and uh, try to do something that will help people to to become better, to do better at their jobs, to be happier in general, to get less lost in our everyday life and you know at least try to follow your dreams and at least do it with the right tools <laughs> exactly and that's why we have uh, uh, this podcast is one of the uh, the things that we, we, we thought would be interesting for uh, Placebo Paradox and uh, this is the main website Placebo Paradox we are producing the podcast and we are doing all the stuff from there um, because it's kind of like the we thought, what would be like the, a really creative way to show what we know? Yeah, a, a case, a business exactly. case. Exactly. No, That's right? it. Yeah, we don't we don't want to sell uh, anything that it's uh, you know we live in a world that it's full of people that will promise you uh, magic uh, formulas. You know, you do that and suddenly everything will be right. Like spoiler alert: world is not like this, <laughs> and we don't want to sell that idea. But what we want to sell is a. Uh, skills, effort, uh, consistency. I think that this is the real magic formula. And since uh, we are confident of what we do, what we want to showcase is our skills in real case scenarios. How do we work them? So you guys know if you like it, you don't like it. But at least you know what is the reality of what we do. And 
we are inviting people. We like to invite people to participate. To if you have an idea, uh, you want to develop it because you don't know how to do these kind of things. So stuff. don't be afraid of sharing because sharing. I I I met some people that are like afraid of sharing the idea because oh they're gonna copy the idea and everything. Mm. I mean we are copying all the time. The copying yeah. thing is not. It's not a, 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 a block that you, you, you have to take in consideration and don't to tell something. Because mm, it's, it's not possible to copy more than we are copying. Yeah. Everything, everything is like this kind of thing. I got, I got an advice from a friend of mine. She is an a Instagram influencer. Mm -hmm. She's very good. She, do, uh, she does uh, photography. And she has a lot of followers and and so on. And I, I was always like thinking like when I whenever I have a project in mind, kind of like I don't want to share the project because I don't want to jinx it. And she told me like yeah, actually, I do the opposite. I share it with everybody because then it adds this layer of pressure. Plus, when you put something out there, uh, there is people that is willing to help you, or there is people that will give you insights. So since uh, she told me that, I changed my attitude towards uh, you know if I have a a project or a business, I share it with everybody because you will see that sometimes you're afraid that, oh, my idea is stupid or my idea is, but then somebody will hear your idea and maybe they have the same idea. Maybe you can uh, group together or maybe he knows somebody or, or she knows somebody that, oh, I know this person. And if I put you in contact with that person mm -hmm. and then you start like taking steps. So if you keep your project to yourself, your project is going to be a great idea only in your imagination. Mm. But if you put it out in the world, then you have a lot of chances that this idea becomes something real. So yeah. that's that's a, a piece of advice that my friend told me. My friend is very successful, so I took it. So it's better to take advices from successful people. Right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, like at least you know like so, somebody with, uh, I don't know how many thousands of uh, followers she has in the Instagram, but I can I can assure you that she is good at, at what she does. So and okay. she makes a lot of projects and many successful projects. So definitely, if it's good for her, I don't understand why it cannot be good for me. So exactly, <laughs> exactly. And so far, I must say that so far it it works because if if I will keep all my projects to myself, probably I will not have met you, and I will have you know in the end everything that is happening. Uh, sometimes the plan deviates a little bit from the initial stage, but it's only because I put it on the street, and then things happen and evolve with the with exactly. the idea. So we encourage everybody to dream big, share your plans, share your uh, put put your idea out in the street, get feedback, get help, and go for it. Exactly, and I think it's like um, it's what we do. I mean, we talking to you from our hearts from this, this podcast. I mean our mistakes, everything. Oh, we are preparing good episodes, uh, really nice episodes for the for the next um, for the next months, because uh, not everything is going to be about business, about studying cases. We are going to also share a little bit, a piece of our lives on what we do, the mistakes, the anecdotes that we have while recording this podcast, and and I think it's going to be much. Uh, and oh yeah, and. For the last episode of the season, and it's going to be for Christmas, we have a special, uh, a special idea for a special episode, probably shorter, but let's see how it goes. And um, yeah, it's going to be the last, uh, the last episode of the season. That doesn't mean that we are not going to continue, but we will see. We want to also, it's Christmas, uh, we want to go with, uh, with our plans and everything, so... Uh, yeah. Uh, well, there was a brief introduction, brief yeah. uh, introduction for the episode because I think is is more dynamic and is uh, gonna help you to understand who we are and what we're doing. And um, let's go for the case. Let's go. What do you think? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Let's go for the case. I want to introduce uh, to this case is a friend of mine. He's called Marcelina. She is a Polish uh, Polish girl who wants to open, uh, she had an idea uh, some time ago and she began really in a really good way because she began to study the market. Mm -hmm. The market is in furniture, selling furniture, secondhand furniture. Okay. And it's quite 
a little bit, I don't know, I didn't think about it, this idea, but she wants to import to Poland mm -hmm. Scandinavian furniture, vintage. Okay. Yeah. And uh, it's a little bit counterintuitive because it's supposed to be more vintage stuff in Poland, <laughs> yeah. but I think it's a very different design because it's more like uh, rational, maybe, the, uh, the kind of uh, furniture they have. Here is more, uh, in Poland, is more uh, functional, um, but it's a, uh, it looks like there is a market. So I, we are going to see the video. Okay. And uh, let's comment this. Episode. Let's see it. Let's see it. Okay, welcome. And uh, please tell us your name and what you do. What do you want to do? Uh, I'm Marcelina. I'm a student. And basically, I do, I mean, I do lots kind of stuff. So, but today, uh, yeah, I want to talk about my kind of idea for business. Uh, like, so, it's an uh, idea for a business kind of collaboration to uh, to import uh, to import to Poland uh, vintage furniture from Scandinavia uh, so I think it's kind of like a niche uh, niche thing in Poland uh, as in right now uh, and I think there's like a lot of people that are interested in that that are interested in vintage old furniture that's uh, doesn't matter if it's been used or not, as long as it looks well, you can, um, I mean, uh, that I could maybe renew at some point, but also like there's a lot of furniture in Scandinavia that's, uh, that doesn't have any uh, way to be imported to Poland. Okay. Like, it's just not available for us in any yeah. reason for any reason so yeah okay so you basically what the idea would be like to um, kind of import furniture yeah to poland yeah from these countries yeah and uh, sell it here sell it here tell me more about the how do you how do you think you would you could do it how could i do it um i mean that's like in a logistic way or more into like uh, you want to go there you want to um, yeah visit there first and just yeah i think it would require like a lot of personal visits first like very maybe even to stay there for a while and just um, just be there visit new places with new people and just be kind of like um, get comfortable in the in the countries uh, and get to know like the markets and the prices and the people so and make 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 contacts that's the most important thing i think and what what do you think would be like the what would you like to know or what would you like to like to work on that to become real oh first i would like to know like how much should i invest in that idea like I don't know, like, how much money do I need to start that? And and how would it look, uh, like, from the mm, business point of view, like, um, with taxes and everything, that's what I would like to know. Like, mm -hmm. uh, how would I, like, especially about the money, it's, I think it's the most important thing. Yeah. And besides that, um, yeah, and about the logistics, like, are there, should I import it, like, through ferry or, like, any other way, like, I, I think it's not as something I gave enough thought, so, so maybe that's something I would like to yeah. know more and explore that, um, that, that field. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Tell me more about your, do you have any experience in restoring furniture or selling furniture or something like this? Mm, not really, but I know, like, I know kind of it's I've been following the market like I like the pol Polish market for that uh, in restoring not really like I'm not advanced but there are some things I know and there are some things I would do if necessary but of course it, there would, it would also require me like a, uh, like a lot of trials and errors I think uh, 
but at the same time like i know i i kind of fall i've been following like for one and a half year the market and how it's been changing mm. but i still think like it's a really niche thing like there are like few people that that actually do it do like do this like mm, do this kind of like professionally that uh they take the responsibility of like completely renewing the vintage stuff and make like giving them a new life so. okay okay so um we will try to do everything in our yeah in All right. our knowledge it would also like be cool to maybe collaborate with the people that actually do it professionally exactly while so. importing the furniture i don't know so let's see. So we will try to do the best. Okay. And uh, maybe we will have some ideas, some inputs. Okay. That will be helpful. I'm happy. So, so yeah. Them. Okay. Yeah. I'm cool. excited. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. What do you think? It's an interesting uh, business idea. Mm -hmm. uh, it's niche. However, it can be interesting because it's true with the economical growth in Poland. Uh, now there is like the acquisition power here in Poland, it's bigger. So mm -hmm. there is more people that would like to get uh, a little bit like this differentiation and not buying furniture in Ikea. And it's something like very, it's something that I have heard many times, like, you know, it, this is kind of like a now a social thing. If you want to have some kind of status, it seems like buying furniture that are not IKEA, you know, it's like it represents that it's something, right? It's it's something special. It's something, and I think that this new generation coming, they value uh, vintage stuff yeah. a lot. Yeah. So if you mix these two things, I think it's a good idea because you mix like young people with the taste for the vintage stuff. Plus, these people actually has money to do it because it's not gonna be cheap. Yeah. Um, also, I think also the what it's important uh, because in this uh, we are gonna analyze a little bit uh, first the the business and the business idea and then we will go through the with the different topics and I think it's really interesting and I think what is vintage because sometimes when I speak with young people nineties uh, is vintage. vintage. Yeah. <laughs> And it, oh, it hurts a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. We're, so, we're vintage already. Because for me, in my mind, 60s and 70s are vintage. I'm 50s. Yeah. But now, for generations, she's like maybe 20, yeah, 22. Yeah, it's a, a clear like Gen Z. <laughs> and uh, vintage for them is also 70s and 60s, but is also maybe 80s and 90s. Yeah. So it's, it's a that, but that's good because it's wide. Yeah, because uh, I mean, like I, I'm not really like have an idea how she can start, but yeah, I mean, like this is this is good for for the business. The the fact that the vintage is a wide range because at first she can just go a little bit wide spectrum with what she wants to sell and see which decade works better or just you know screw this idea of just whatever she thinks she will have the criteria of what she considers vintage and that's yeah. it. That's fair and enough. also what I like is that she's very conscious about uh, the process. I mean, she she thought, she, th uh, she was saying that she's not really aware as yeah. she wants, but she knows she was starting doing uh, market research before, okay. before taking any decision. Uh, also, she knows a little bit of uh, of, uh, of restoration and uh, uh, okay. this kind of stuff. So she has this mentality of like, and she was uh, saying also, error, mistake, um, fixing the yeah. error. So she has this, which is really good. The mindset, yeah. The mindset she has it. An entrepreneurial yeah, mindset. Naturally, uh, which is really good. So even in her background is not like professional, mm -hmm. but she has she can learn uh, okay. in the in the in the future. Uh, so um, the problem I see, uh, uh, the first problems I see for these uh, on the struggles will be like the the you need to go to these countries to buy buy stuff and then just sell it here. So you need to spend time and also contacts. Yeah, this is probably one of the things that uh, it's. I don't think that there is a workaround for that. That she needs to invest in going to these places. 
uh, getting contacts of like uh, storage, you know, places where where she can find this kind of furniture and get all the contacts. Yeah. And this is this is something that uh, yeah, this is the first investment that she will need to do. Then it's 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 a trip. Okay, it's not a huge investment. It's only that these places are expensive, but if you're not going for pleasure, you're going for work, you find a cheap accommodation, you find cheap transportation and you eat at home, that's it. Yeah. yeah I mean like it's it's not a you know, it's not a great investment and you can enjoy the trip as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like the first thing that I would say is see what is inside a European community and what is not, because for example, uh, I will discard Norway because I think that uh, Norway is not an uh, economical uh, member of the European Union. So then the taxes are automatically bigger. And also Norway is expensive as well. I mean, yeah. Scandinavia is expensive, but maybe she can go like uh, Denmark and Sweden. Yeah. So this is the first thing. I'm not that quite sure about that, but this is the first thing that I will say to her, like, where are you going to go? Pick one country, maybe Sweden or Denmark, yeah. whatever it is. Uh, but something within the European Union, because then there are no taxes for exporting. That's totally first thing. true. That's totally true. So, uh, okay. So, what else? One guide uh, me. Yeah, the, I want to define a little bit the products because I was talking with her off camera uh, because uh, I forgot to ask her about the products that she has uh, in mind. And she has two, let's say, lines of, uh, of business. One will be like uh, selling, um, uh, selling vintage furniture to clients. And the other one, she wants to go for these like, uh, um, really fine, uh, fine um, like high level of furniture for uh, people here. So there's two different products. Obviously, uh, will be that the first one, the first, the first stage will be like selling products here for vintage, and then scaling this this business to. But this this high high level furniture, it's something like new or still, it's something that she's looking to buy secondhand. Yeah, she's product. also a, she's talking about vintage all the time. Yeah, because it, it looks like there is a two different kind of uh, furniture. These are uh, really super expensive, like high end and stuff. And so I think it will be like, um, let's say, for example, like what she was saying about the the market. The market here is a very niche. So I think is one of the the uh, the advantages that she can has because she she found out that she has only like a couple of people in Poland doing this. Which is good because she can learn from there. Mm -hmm. She can learn from these people what they're doing. Maybe she can just have a, this collaboration. She's open also to collaboration, which is really interesting for her to to see. I know this face. What is this face? No, this no, face? no. I'm, <laughs> I'm thinking because like there are there are. Uh, I'm thinking different ways to start that, and all has pros and cons. So my first thoughts is like. My my very first thought would be like to do something like drop shipping, because it's the cheapest. So basically, what I will do is, uh, or one of the options I would say, one of the options is, she goes there, she collect contacts, but uh, she only export once that she made the sale, because then she doesn't need liquidity for that. She doesn't need anything. Uh, she just need a good you know, a network in the country that will provide her the furniture and make the pictures and she will just make a very easy to navigate and web page with a very strong uh, CEO targeting audience in Poland. Mm -hmm. She will uh, get like some kind of deal with any transportation uh, um, company yeah. and only when she sells she start the operation. And this has some risk, but on the other hand, this is the cheapest because she doesn't need to invest anything. She yeah. works, I mean, like only the trip there and the web page because the other option is to import 
and then sell them here. For, for that, you need space. You, you need to invest because you will need to do the, the import with your own money, which mm -hmm. it can be, uh, if you make, for example, you import the full track, in the end, the margin is going to be bigger because you you will be able to save in, in in the transportation. However, you will need to do the investment at once. And I don't know if she will have this kind of money. And then you need a storage room uh, that they will cost. So, you know, like these are the, the two. So my my first, my initial idea is drop shipping style mm -hmm. because it's less risky. Um, the margin is going to be lower, but if eventually, if you make it happen, you can start like evolving. That will be the ideal situation. But um, the problem I see is sometimes this vintage furniture appears from not from nowhere. Yeah, you know, a house with like emptying or something like that. You need to be on the on the on the track. You know, on the track of the what is happening in the city, in those cities. And sometimes the offers are like, yeah. like super quick. And you need, or you buy it, or someone else is going to yeah. buy it. And that's the main problem I see on this, on this kind of business. You need to have uh, cash flow. You need to have cash flow to be able to buy eventually something that you will, you will need. Um, as a starting point, yeah, as you said, it's, it's good. Your offer is going to be reduced. Mm -hmm. Because not, I mean, let's say, let's go for the practical thing. Okay, imagine that you have a, um, I don't know, let's say we can start with 10 products in your website that you're gonna, you want to sell. And you go to these places in Scandinavia, whatever it is, and you take photos, right? You take photos of the place, but they're somewhere because they have to be somewhere. Uh, maybe in a house, maybe in a, in a, in a storage room from one seller. I think also selling, I mean, buying things to a seller, let's say a shop already existing in, in, in Scandinavia, you buy these things to these people, let's say like um, reselling stuff. Yeah. Reselling stuff will be also a, a bigger, uh, let's say you, you will have less margin and, but you will have more uh, contact with the yeah. with the good with the good um, with the good material at the end, and slowly having this this reputation, having this more contacts, mm -hmm. you have more money. But it's totally true that you said as a power like, if you need to sell furniture, you will have to need a storage room. It's yeah. That's completely true, and especially in special conditions, because we don't think we think about they need a special a special uh, treatment, mm -hmm. humidity, uh, uh, raining stuff, and protection on fire protection. You need to all this kind of stuff, so it has to be adapted to these. Uh, um, but it's not really like there is a lot of place empty places in Poland that you can uh, you can rent, and it's not really uh, let's say it's not crazy expensive. I think it's more expensive to bring things here. Yeah. Actually. That will be like the the I mean like the ideal thing will be actually if she will live there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we, we will we will think about this strategy later because I want I have a mm -hmm. strategy for her later. But okay. we're gonna because in this blog we're gonna do strength and, and uh, strength and opportunities and uh, and all the financial stuff and everything. But I think it's also um, the market, I don't know the market, how it is. Uh, but she was feel, she was been following uh, the market for one year and a half, which I think is quite enough to know what is going on on the market. What do you think? I mean, one year and a half to follow one specific market? Yeah, enough. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just, I mean, you, you, you have some knowledge at least. Yeah. And uh, the, I think the, the the critical thing is like transportation here. How you once you have your your furniture, as you said before at the beginning, if you have a, 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 a truck loaded with furniture, it's gonna be cheaper, for sure. You're gonna have more because 
you need only one one trip to go there. Yep. Uh, more or less, you can. I think that that ballparking parking here uh, price can be like three thousand euro to make a transportation of a full truck. So it's like three thousand euros plus the cost of every piece of furniture. Like put like that is like ten pieces of furniture. Uh, an average what can cost seven hundred some seven thousand. So it's like only ten thousand ball parking. 10,000, let's add a little bit more because it's better to aim for more and then if it's better. But at least you will need to have like 12,000 only, 12,000 euro only to do the the import here. This is without taxes having... Taxes and, and with Taxes, no, it's not... The, uh, I think that there are no taxes because you need to pay uh, VAT, but then you can discount it. It's yeah, okay. it's true. Yeah, so it's it's, it's okay. Yeah. It's in the end, it's netto. But okay, you will need to pay a little bit extra. Uh, so plus then renting a a, a place here that uh, to storage that uh, renting like let's see how much can it cost. Because I'm thinking about the threats. What would be the threats about this business? Is like. Uh, uh, let's say losing your cargo somewhere mm -hmm. you have an accident or something like that and uh, it's just you know like you have a, 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 it can happen you know like you're going by by transportation when you're moving something you are you have a risk of uh, losing your cargo and everything yeah. and so that's a really big threat because you're investing a lot of money on these on these movings how to the other threat will be like uh you have to move there. You have to. You have to. You have to count with contacts. Yeah. Uh, another threat is like that you don't sell it. Yeah. And it's you lose. This is the number one threat. I would this say. is the number one threat because then the investment that you do because I'm calculating, more or less, a storage room of you know like around hundred square meters. That can cost like twelve. 1200 euros uh, you need to at least rent for one year so that means that you need to count that you will have another extra like 15,000 euro only to rent the play so uh, we are already in how much money like 30,000 euro without selling without making a sell so uh, you need to be very confident that you're gonna sell so that's why for me it's more important to sell first and then do the operation because this is uh, like importing directly. It's it's very expensive. If so, I will see more like in that trip. Try to associate with somebody there that has resources, mm -hmm. and then storage store. You you need to find either you need to live there or find a proxy there. Somebody that will. Uh, basically do all that stuff for you uh, looking for furniture so you hire somebody that looks for the furniture and storage there it still mm -hmm. is gonna cost but it's gonna at least you're saving the transportation cost until you do sellings I, I did a really uh, quick check on the um, by the way guys use AI use mm -hmm. chat GPT it's really helpful to have is a tool is a is something that is not one hundred percent sure, but it helps a lot to have an idea, an yeah. estimation, estimations, and uh, that's what one of the thing I learned from you actually. Estimations yeah. is so super important. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking about like for example, you have a vintage stuff in Poland, a furniture, without specifying that is from uh, Scandinavian. It can go from. Uh, one thousand dollars, euros, more or less, to ten thousand and twelve thousand yeah. for one piece. This is the good thing. I think that you can, if you target the right uh, client, it, you can have a lot of margin. And also, I think the 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 the, the strength one of the one of the strengths and opportunities is like it is directly Scandinavian is directly. 
uh, associated with expensive. Yeah. So people are willing to pay for this automatically. You have this this uh, uh, this price automatically to your yeah. to your uh, to the description of the product that, that you yeah. have. No, no, definitely this is something like you cannot target. Uh, even like middle class, I'm sorry, you need to target like the top people in, in Poland because again, like most of the people that is like middle class or like making like average salaries and even like a little bit above average salary, yeah. they will be buying their furniture in IKEA. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you obviously. need to go for, you know, people that it's wealthy and they want to differentiate them. They yeah. have a taste for the vintage and they have money. To spend yeah. on that, and uh, I think that this is a business that is uh, rather like not selling a lot, but having like few exclusive products, and every one of your sales needs to cover you for several months. So you need to go expensive with that. Let's say, for example, okay, you go expensive. You go, let's say, for twelve thousand euros or one the really vintage, you know, like uh, this kind of stuff. Uh, really like excuse gems of yeah. uh, vintage stuff. What will be the profit? What will be the percentage of the profit? Because I think is like what's happening with these kind of things is like the market itself overpriced automatically. Yeah. These kind of things. It's like in these uh, auctions, right? These auctions sometimes is like crazy. Mm-hmm. How they like what they are selling this this thing about like for one million dollars or something or ten million dollars. And I think it's part of the investment mm-hmm. because when you buy these kind of things, you are kind of like investing in your not only in the looks that you have, but also in the piece of it. Because the vintage stuff, the only the good thing about this is it's gonna grow the price every year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, every year it's a kind it's, of an investment. Yeah, you can you can put it as an investment. It has to be very special, obviously. I mean, obviously, not not yeah, all of them. Yeah, yeah. Like uh, the thing is, like this connects to the uh, ability of Marcelina to find uh, a provider. This is the thing because these kind of things are the the business, as I see, is find uh, a bargain there, like something that is cheap for reasons because somebody doesn't want it. And then sell it here for a very pricey. Because first of all, going to Scandinavia and pay something like some piece of furniture in Europe is going to be really expensive. Mm -hmm. If you need to hire somebody there to help you because you are not there, it's going to be extra expenses plus the transportation plus your margin. Uh, You will need to really, really overprice the product to cover all the expenses. The other line of business here would be restoration. But mm. this is a totally different model. But okay, let's let's try to make a, a quick calculation. Let me let me see if I can make a a quick calculation. Let's okay. let's be this is gonna be all like again, bold parking numbers. No, nothing of this is real. I'm just imagine like that she can find a, a sofa there. However, let's not get there. But she can buy a sofa for uh, 400 euros. Okay. Okay. Now. While he's doing the, you, you need some time to do the calculations? Uh, we can do it like as, as I'm speaking because we can be like, we need to say that it's going to be a one-time transportation. Okay. Uh, let's see how much uh, can it cost. Okay. Yeah, because the transportation, I mean, the good thing in Europe is that we are very well connected and you can go. Uh, and also, I would like to tell you about the one of the concepts that we are doing here is the unique selling point, USP. USP is one of the really like very nice tool and very useful tool to understand what's your uh, unique selling point. A unique selling point means what it differentiates you from the competition, what it makes you different, what it makes you better. So you can focus on that to sell better your, your product. And uh, that's what we do here. We're trying to use the different 
tools and different concepts about it to to discover these uh, strengths, but also uh, um, uh, strengths and also uh, uh, opportunities or all of these kind of things. So yeah, um, maybe you need more time. No, uh, basically, let's. So you you said before that what can it be the price of a you know, if it costs me 400 euros, I can sell it for... I, I, I remember when I was... Uh, because I, I've been dealing not specifically with a shop, but they were basically... They were increasing at least um, between 100% and 200% yeah. the, the price of the, of the, of the furniture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I thought. Like, uh, more or less, transportation and sofa will be like 700 euros at some additional cost, let's say it's a total of 1,000 euro. Yeah. Uh, an increase, like you can sell it for 3,000. Yeah. Your margin is uh, 2,000, okay? Yeah. If you can do this operation once per month, you're not gonna be rich. But you're gonna be stable enough to keep going. Yeah, because out of this euro, you will need to deduct taxes. That can be like probably like 20% of it. So you will have a, a normal salary, like a, a, a okay salary, average. Yeah. You can live out of this. But again, there are many ifs in this operation. Yeah. Meaning like you have that you need to get the bargain. So this is very, very, uh, it depends on the situation. Yeah. Second you need to make a sell and it, it needs to be worth it, okay? Then uh, to get the bargains, you need to be in the place or you need to have somebody. If you add somebody in the equation, you need to pay a salary in Scandinavia. Yeah. Unless you make any kind of arrangement with somebody that will do it in exchange of uh, margin. Yeah. But again, you are then losing your margin. Yeah. And the margin of somebody, <coughs> sorry, Margin of somebody in Scandinavia is going to be bigger <clears throat> than somebody in, in Poland, right? Yeah. So, uh, I see a possibility here, but I would not recommend to do go like fooling on that, but maybe to have it as an additional... Uh, with this model, I think it's something that you can have as an additional uh, a side gig. Mm -hmm. And then if it goes very well because you find some contacts and something, that's amazing. But I will see that for a person that, for example, can travel a lot and it's willing to invest and it's not tied to a specific place for work and she can go to, to Scandinavia. And even like the ideal would be living there, but that, that, will, in, that will automatically increase the margin that she needs. Yeah, because this is the great problem. Like buying in a com in a place like Scandinavia to sell in Poland. Poland is growing, but still the economical uh, standards in both places are different. It would be like a lot different to do it the opposite way. Yeah. Because in Poland you can buy a lot cheaper and sell it in Scandinavia. Uh, where people has a, a, a bigger economical power, but it's doable. Yeah. But it, it has like uh, all the logistic problems are are complicated. What do you think? I think it's kind of like uh, these. Uh, the main problems are like uh, exactly these ones, and I think it's also um, one of the one of the best things is you still have let's say. Um, you still have uh, uh, some kind of uh, um, space to modify different things. Because I was thinking when you were telling me all this stuff, what would be the, one of the best, uh, let's say, scenarios to do that? She is uh, she is uh, still young. She's uh, studying. She's doing things, and uh, it will be also really interesting because I think she wants to live there. Mm -hmm. She can use also her studies to live there because probably she will she would like to move because she's she's she likes the country mm -hmm. and 
using your own studies to do this Erasmus on different stuff and just start building these, these, uh, these contacts and using the same amount of money yeah. to keep um, improving your, 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 your studies, but also living there and just having connections. If she has this opportunity, yeah, that, that can be interesting. Like you go there, uh, if you go with uh, any kind of help from, you know, like you say, Erasmus or any other thing, uh, that will decrease the economical pressure. And with that, you make contact and it will be interesting at the beginning to get the source of income. Yeah. And then it has this as a side gig until you can scale it into big things. Because then if you can scale it, in the end it will be like put it on the on the street and then eventually find somebody that is interested in doing that and has already like their storage or it's like I'm thinking, for example, one person that is renewing, uh, re restoring furniture, but it's a good craftsman and doesn't know how to, yeah. how to sell them. And yeah. then if you are the selling point to other countries and then, you know, you go Poland, but if you're going online and your headquarters is in Sweden, let's say, yeah. then you don't need to go Poland. You can go Poland, Slovakia, Czech Republic, yeah. whatever. So maybe this is the way of of doing that. Going there, find somebody there, uh, find the contacts there, and and stay there. And I guess that uh, restoration can be a good option as well. Yeah, for because, many reasons. Yeah, for sure. You need to prepare some some furniture to sell it at the end. And also, you want to have a, 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 an income, right? When when you are there, when you're studying and something, you can also try to find. Uh, a job in this kind of businesses yep. to learn how it comes as well. How the, how they do that? You will you will your face will be like there, and you will be there. You will be dealing with people, and it will be also interesting if you really want to move there. That we're all we are speculating, right? Yeah, we, we don't know. But that that will be like the the smartest move from my point of view right now, uh, because otherwise it's very costly. Yeah, it's very expensive. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, from I mean, it, for this block number mm -hmm. one, I think it's we have enough information. Yeah, I, I mean, think. it got me super quick. This this block number one, I don't know why. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it went fast. Yeah, it's super. But then super we've been quick. like forty minutes. Yeah, forty no forty five minutes already. Forty five minutes, less, more or less. Okay. Um, okay, we are going for the block number two. Uh, yeah. We will talk. We will be talking about uh, marketing operations, which is like uh, our leadership, which is also your strong points and the customer experience will be like it's very interesting right? yeah it's very interesting the customer experience mm, do you want to do any recap anything any comment no basically like i think that we have uh, gone through the basics of the uh, business it's uh in my opinion a difficult business uh, but i think that it's it can be yeah, with some flexibility it can be uh, possible but we need to see all these how to reduce all these expenses and how to do it like very efficiently, you know, efficient cost versus expenses versus earnings. Mm -hmm. Okay. Perfect. So I guess that's see you in the next vlog. Bye. Thank you, Cluster, for leaving us the place to make the podcast. If you guys are looking for a, a co-working space, they have three in Krakow, two in Katowice and one in Warsaw. And here you can find all the amenities that you may need. They have like open spaces, conference room, an amazing kitchen. We tried the coffee, it's great. Uh, then some fruits. So thank you one more time for letting us record in the podcast here. Okay, welcome back to the block number two. Um, we we had our coffees refilled, our water. We are more hydrated, uh, so let's go. For, <laughs> let's go for the next block. Hydration is important. Exactly, uh, and then we are going to talk about uh, marketing 
operations, logistics, mm -hmm. and also I think is really important in this case is the customer service and the the feedback from them. Yeah. How you're gonna manage? So let's go. Which one? Which topic do you want to choose first? Operations. Okay, let's go. Yeah. Let's okay. go. Okay. Operations, operations and, well. and leadership. Yeah, I mean, like uh, here it is like we need to think what is going to be the final model that we're going to use. Because in the previous blog, we were speaking about different ways to do the same thing. And every kind of model changes a lot how you're going to see at that. Uh, because we need to see what is the end-to-end -end journey of uh, the whole transaction, right? So it starts by buying furniture and it ends by selling furniture. In this journey, you have a number of uh, expenses. A lot of things happening. Yeah, a lot of logistics. So what do you need to do in terms of operation? Try to reduce the logistics between. So this is why the ideal case scenario is that you actually sell before you buy. Yeah. And because then you don't need, you basically just need to transport from one place to another. So from the seller, to the buyer. That will be the target that you need to have in mind when you run the operation. Try to do that. Yeah. Now, this is going to be like very difficult to do. And in the moment that you add layers to this logistic operation, it becomes more expensive because it's what we're speaking. And less margin. And less margin, exactly. Yeah. And you need to either earn less or make the piece a lot more expensive to compensate or both, right? Yeah. So. The thing is like uh, logistic. Let's say that you, we have the ideal case scenario. For mm -hmm. me, ideal case scenario is like you basically have like some kind of providers mm -hmm. in Scandinavia, in Sweden. Let's 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 speak about Sweden just to make it easy. So imagine like we go to Sweden, and I have like uh, two or three guys that are dedicated to buy this kind of furniture, and they have a storage room there, and they sell to people in Scandinavia. But as well, I buy to them. This can be a good way. Yeah. I don't know if this exists, but that will be the first thing that I will check. If there is already somebody that is selling that, let's say locally, because if they are selling online, they're going to... It has to yeah. be. It has to be. I did, it has to be some, some people. So that. imagine you go to small cities that they have like uh, this kind of like... Sec Actually, in Scandinavia, second hand is a big thing. So... Yeah. Uh, you will need to buy to go to secondhand stores that they don't sell online, and just tell them to make any kind of deal with them. I mean, like you just buy to them or directly, and then you sell it. If you get that, the operation becomes a lot cheaper. The only problem is like uh, if these people realize that they can do that without you, they will just. Do it themselves. It not the necessarily, idea. not necessarily, because uh, it's a market, is a language they don't, they don't know, is a, a, um, a culture they don't know, they don't know the market here. So it's not necessarily needs to be like an, a, a, a risk, I would say, because yep. also they, uh, it's much better, think about it for one second, it's much better to hire this person yep. that comes to you than trying to steal the idea. Or yeah. like doing by yourself because it's gonna be more profitable for you. Absolutely. So it's not really necessarily a risk. Obviously, I mean, we are talking about the ideal scenario, right? Just yeah, but I mean, like, if you do your the job right, it's highly unlikely that the person that is selling the furniture doesn't actually. It's it's for like as you said, for them it's easier just to have a a deal with you because yeah. they don't need to do nothing. Yeah. Uh, just sell the furniture to you and then you deal with the rest. Exactly. So that is the ideal case scenario. Find in go go villages, find the second hand stores, um, just get the contact and just say like whenever uh, this kind of furniture enters, you send me five pictures. Yeah. And, and then, you know, also will be like very interesting to know um, uh, in terms of operations um how um, what is the deal where in which countries they are selling internationally is right now these these companies because um, they are not selling in Poland but maybe they are selling um, to some other countries I don't know maybe Germany or maybe France is a big 
uh, importer from this furniture? Uh, we don't know. Will be interesting to know to also to see what's the margin, how much how much time it gets, what what they're using for delivery, how much time they spend for delivery. Yeah. All this kind of thing will be very interesting. The prices that they have to, it will be interesting to know. There's another thing that, that she can do it to check the market for that kind of things and even like try to associate herself and say, do you, I, I think that I have like some possibilities in Poland of selling. If you want, I can, I can start, you know, and associate with this, this kind of brand. That's a, a good idea too. But yeah, basically in terms of operation, what I will have in mind, it's always uh, reducing cost in the matter that the least she can have the product the best. Yeah. Because, uh, again, to increase margin, she needs to make sure that she doesn't need to store the product because that is very expensive and risky. Yeah. And at the end, let's say, for example, how many people do you think she will need? One, for sure, uh, one person there. One person who is, like, taking new furniture let's say if it can be this business but it can be also your your worker uh, you need also another people who are all people who is delivering yeah. this to Poland the other one you need to buy and sell which is it could it could be her for example yeah. now right? the, the thing is like if we go for the modeling which you touch the product as as few as possible you basically don't need nobody because what I would do is go to second hand shops and you are dealing directly with the people that run the, the shop. That you don't need nobody. Yeah. In term, you need to go there, uh, make a tour. Like as you said, like maybe you can live there like three months, four months, and tour around places, getting contacts, and just say to the people, I have this web page. I will build a web page before, even like make a prototype with fake pictures and everything. Um, I'm selling this furniture. I want to sell it in Poland. Uh, I will buy it to you for the price that they are selling. The only thing that I'm asking you is whenever you get this kind of piece, give me a call, take five pictures with these characteristics. I will print in my web page. And if it sells, I will buy it to you. And I will take all the cost and all the efforts of transportation. Mm -hmm. So. What she needs is actually no, she doesn't need people that work for her. Yeah. She needs uh, basically vendors, let's say. Yeah. Uh, she needs different furniture providers, at least like find three, four shops like that. And then a transportation company. Uh, at first, if she, if she is not moving a lot, she will need to go with regular prices and, you know, uh, um, move one piece at, at a time you will if you i mean because if you go but let's say for example a private van or a private truck or something like that it can cost you up to three thousand uh four thousand euros yeah uh, uh for one 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 delivery only yeah but if you go through the systems that are already done like for example these companies like um uh like the, the like moving companies yeah, and everything. There are, there are plenty they're of. really they're really affordable actually. Yeah, I mean like I think that, that if you're moving piece by piece it's uh, around three hundred to five hundred euro per piece. Uh, which is okay at the beginning. You will not have a lot of margin. But pros and cons, if you don't sell, you don't lose. Yeah. You only lose whatever time and money you have invested in going there and your web page. If you sell a little bit, you have a small margin, but it's an extra. And if you sell a lot, then you can start bundling. Say like, okay, instead of having like delivering you in three days, I'm going to give you five days. And you bundle three, four pieces of furniture and then you start getting bigger margin. And if suddenly the business goes so well that you can grow and get more shops and you sell more than three, four, five pieces per month, then you can have your own deal with some kind of transportation company. But this is a 
long, long run that it's not going to be there like. And also we have to think that if we are taking in consideration that it is stable, let's say like for example, you grow to the, to the, to the point that you are selling five furniture a month and you stay there. Yeah, yeah. We are counting that. We are count- the ideal scenario would be like yeah. that. I mean, you, you can always scale it by going to other countries, either purchasing in other countries like Denmark. Like Imagine like we are starting in Sweden and suddenly it goes so well. Then you say, okay, so I'm going to do the same operation in Denmark or uh, changing the end customer. Yeah. It's going so well in Poland that, I'm, that this is a lot cheaper, actually. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Instead of selling only in Poland, I'm going to sell in Poland, uh, Czech Republic, Slovakia, and see how it goes. Um, you know, you have, you have the margin to grow in these two directions, which is absolutely fine. Mm-hmm. But at first, uh, if you manage to sell one piece of furniture per month, that's already something. And if you I manage to do it following this business model where you don't need to storage, you just... Uh, actually... It's what I told you. You sell it before you buy it. Mm-hmm. The only problem that I can see is like if it's at the same time, you sell it and the seller sell it as well. Yeah. So you will need to be very quick in terms of once that somebody purchases an order, you need to contact the guy. This is for me. And then order confirmation. But it's it's not a big risk. It's it's a it's doable. Yeah. The only thing is like you need to find these places in Scandinavia. Yeah. And then you need to sell it for high price. And in this is one of the cases that I think that you need to overprice the product. Let's say for example, what do you need? What do you need to contact in my point of view? What do you need to to be able to do these operations as a as a professional, mm-hmm. as a as an owner? You need especially negotiation skills. Yeah. You need to know what you can offer. Mm-hmm. You need to know how much you can sell and how m- the margin that you have of benefits. This requires a lot of organization in your mind, in your in your own skills. You need also uh, you, you need to know which which with who you are, you, you 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 can you can you can talk or you can just mm-hmm. deal things. You can you need to identify the strengths on the the uh, one company. For example, let's say you go with a with a person who owns a secondhand shop or like a furniture. You need to also understand what the difficulties for them, what the opportunities that you can offer them, yeah. and it's also these uh, these skills and this mindset you need to have to be able to deal with that, to have deals, to have better deals. Uh, you need organization for sure. Yeah, you need to organize yourself about like the schedule that you have, the how much how much time you you're gonna need to send this product. As you said, it's crucial. Sending fast what you what you sold is crucial to contact that. You need to you need to be organized. And the ideal cases, I mean, skills that you need is exactly like. Uh, people skill to deal with this kind of to, to close the deals with the with the people that you have. Uh, understanding your client when you are making the web page, understanding what the clients can look at that uh, in this in this kind of products, and be bold again. Like I think that this is the kind of product that you need to overprice because you are not aiming to sell a lot of pieces. Like you are totally the opposite as IKEA. Yeah. IKEA sells like hundreds of thousands per day of cheap stuff with small margin, makes a lot of money. You are going in the totally opposite direction. You need to sell one thing with a lot of margin per month. Yeah. So you need to overprice the product and try to sell it uh, because you need to overcome all the expenses, right? So you need to understand what is your potential buyer. And in terms of organization, uh, I don't think that speed it can be a factor here because whoever buys something like that, probably, you know, it's it's not something like, like you buy an Allegro, like a cable, an Allegro or Amazon, something that you need like tomorrow. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. It's because one of my ideas is like give one month. I think that one month is okay for delivery because it's exclusive piece, blah, blah, blah. 
So you can try to bundle because the idea is like once that you sell one thing, try to sell another and then you make it the transportation. That works if you only have one provider. If you have different provider, actually that it doesn't matter because the transportation is gonna cost you. You know what I mean? Like if I have three shops in Sweden, mm-hmm. in different places, if all the shops are in Stockholm still, but if you have like two shops in Stockholm, uh, one in Gothenburg and another one in any other city, uh, and you know, it really doesn't matter to bundle. So I don't know. You will need to see like as well, depending yeah. on how many provide, how yeah, like the, the amount of providers that you have and where are they located. Mm. Yeah, I was talking about more about the 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 the. Uh, you don't need to procrastinate too much when you have this kind of uh, these kind of deals. It's obviously the the delivery has to be like what yeah, it is, yeah. as you said, is trying to trying to bundle all this stuff and. Let's talk about like um, okay. Let's go. Like I think it's also a big thing is the website, social mm-hmm. media, yeah, yeah, and the use of these technologies to do that. Okay, let's go for first the website, which I think is the crucial thing, in my opinion. It, it, it is, yeah, is a crucial thing to consider more than social media. Absolutely, I will say because uh, you need you need to have. I mean, you're dealing with a Scandinavian design and mm-hmm. the can, the client who is looking for that, uh, they are really like, they take care about the visuals, they take care about the aesthetics, they take, about, they take care about everything. So you need to really have really good design on the web, on the web page. It cannot be like, um, um, you need to spend time. Time and think about the client. And I think it's crucial. Yeah. It's crucial to know. Make it easy, make it also uh, interesting mm-hmm. and have your own philosophy because you need a philosophy at the end. Okay. Uh, you, you, need to, you need a unique point of view mm-hmm. that can tell uh, the ideal situation mm-hmm. will be like identify your website and your image and philosophy everywhere. Let's say, oh yeah, I remember this, this, this mm-hmm. girl. And, and what do you think it can be? Um, design, design, the colors, mm, tell your story. For example, you can tell the story about yourself. Mm-hmm. You can tell the story of who you are. You are like, uh, she's, she's, she's an artist. Mm-hmm. She's doing a lot of stuff. She said, she said she's doing a lot of stuff. And uh, she, can, she can use her own personality to, to sell these things. Mm-hmm. The, her own story, that she's a, a local in Poland, selling these things, and she knows what she's doing, and um, she cares a lot of, about aesthetics, and I think is a is a very basic thing to do that, and also that I think will be very interesting to see to show her face mm-hmm. and see I'm here, I will be for you. You're buying not for a company, you're buying for a person. Okay. Me. So personal branding. Personal right. branding. But personal branding in the terms like not about the is like I, I think it's more than personal branding will be like more that someone is behind this thing is a person and it's me. It's more like saying like um uh yeah, let's say for example like in 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 this uh, kitchen, right? In this in the in these restaurants, you know there is the cook, which is a uh, famous, for example, Ferran Adria, you mm-hmm. know, like and you know everything that he's gonna do, he's behind him, and he's the guarantee that you're gonna have yeah. what you want. The same thing, like saying like it doesn't matter what I'm gonna open, it's gonna be I'm gonna give you this quality, I'm gonna give you these things because at the end it's the story of a guy who began his career really young, blah blah, yeah. and then he he managed to revolutionize. The, the kitchen in, yeah. in Spain and the world, blah, blah, this kind of thing. And how do you think that, that she can do that? Like, like what, what would be like the first steps for her to start building that? Uh, the reputation. Reputation and knowledge. Let's say, for example, like uh, she studied, uh, she knows how to deal with uh, restoration. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you know how to treat the stuff. But also, you know, she's, uh, I think she's, uh, 
Well, she's an artist, but I don't exactly know what she's doing. Okay. But she can use her artistic background as a as a as a. Yeah, like the love of aesthetics, like the. For example, there is a case here in Poland. Uh, I don't know if you heard about this. Is a famous Polish actor uh, from films and really like, mm -hmm. and then he retired. And he he founded a um, wine shop. Okay. Mm -hmm. And he become more successful. I, I don't know. I don't know the numbers, but yeah, just but he became like successful he, with the wines. Yeah, and now he has uh, shops everywhere, and he's a. Uh, so the same thing. Uh, at the end, he has he has his name mm -hmm. on the brand, so it's him. Yeah. But he do, you don't need necessarily have the knowledge. To be like um, I don't know, like a, a sommelier, to start selling stuff. Yeah. So what what will be like? A, uh, imagine that she starts from nothing. For nothing. What is? Because like the difference between this guy is like he already had a name before, and he used his reputation as an actor to open the the online wine shop. Yeah. But with, uh, with Marcelina, I think she starts from zero. So. If she is uh, starting business tomorrow, what are the things in terms of social media and internet that she should start? I think we should. She should start about her journey, mm -hmm. her journey to learning things, the skills that she's doing, the the process of learning, the process of. It's very interesting to see how people can grow. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I think it's kind of like you have to you have to go have a goal. In your social media and everything. Let's say, for example, I want to start this business, as you said, tomorrow. Obviously, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be able to do that tomorrow. Yeah. I need a process, right? I need to do that. But I have a goal set in mind. Let's say I want to build these things in one year. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to start learning furniture, learning how to restoration. You have to, you can show yourself doing these kind of things, doing. Buying these small things, these small chairs, for example, yeah, and restoring this, taking pictures of it, doing the process, how you, you, for example, going to second market uh, uh, shops here, not mm -hmm. necessarily related with uh, with furniture, but you you can go on this. On like this. get get yourself into the vintage, exactly, and not only vintage, but also taking care of the pieces that you acquire. Yeah. And how you sell it, or maybe you can donate it to someone, mm -hmm. and you can see. Uh, let's say I don't know. I have a chair that I restored briefly, mm -hmm. and instead of selling it because I don't have these skills enough to do that, but I will give it to my friend. Okay, so but that's a, a idea for, for example, her Instagram, right? For, again, social media. Social, social media in that. general, like going to to do like some posts on a personal level on a yeah. personal account about buying vintage stuff mm, like not necessarily be, it has to be in the personal account you can have also the account in the, mind like you already open I, what I mean is like that the idea is like she's gonna sell it with her own name right like yeah. you want to associate the the quality process with her own name yeah so the export firm is it's not gonna be seen as a you know cold big company, but as a person that is doing that stuff, right? Because at the end we are we are talking we were talking since the beginning about that we are completely the opposite of IKEA. Yeah, and IKEA is big stuff, big places, cheap stuff, and that's it. No one is behind it. Yeah, but we are here. We need to sell this thing. Yeah, like she needs to position herself as a. Kind of like an expert curator of furniture that yeah. she, her opinion of what is good matters. Yeah. She knows, uh, I will go even like not that much about restoration, but about artistic point of view. Like she needs to become an influencer example, in the matter of uh, this is good because I say so and you trust me and this is why I'm selling you for that price because you trust my criteria on that piece of furniture. Yeah. It's uh, it's something that you're gonna have forever, and it's gonna be uh, a temporal, and it's gonna be good, and you're gonna be happy about that. I think it's two things because mm -hmm. I remember I was uh, th those two things as you said, and and, and the other, and the other stuff. I remember I was watching these uh, these two Mexican guys. I mean, these are I think they're a couple. No, they're brothers. I think uh -huh. right? they're siblings, 
and they are uh, specialized in doing furniture of concrete. Okay. I'm crazy. Yeah. You know, like, but they are really like, they're mixing two things. Uh, what is the key of success, in my opinion, they're mixing two things. They know how to build it, yeah. how to do the hard work, how to build a really nice concrete, because it's an art, uh -huh. I mean, a really nice concrete, especially for furniture and stuff. But also because they care about the design. Uh -huh. So they, two, they have two things. The skills, let's say restoration, in this case, uh, of these uh, siblings would be like how to build it. So you have you know the technical stuff, but also you know about the design. Yeah. This the second part that you were saying. This specialist, my criteria is important yeah. for you. They have those two things, so they are able to yeah. teach you technical stuff, but also they care yeah, about the yeah. design. Yeah, I think that, that 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 she has already some knowledge of restoration, and she goes and. Because it shows that she cares, that it's not about the money, it's yeah. about the quality. Like and the, the story. Yeah, somebody that cares about the product, it's going to be always like, you're going to be, you're going to trust this person. If you know, like, this person knows how to restore, I can follow her on Instagram and I see that she's uh, getting, like, formation about that. So whenever I buy something from her, I feel confident that is going to be a good thing because I trust this person. So yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that sounds good. Yeah, And then on building this thing and then on the website, on the things that you have, you have already a background. You can tell the story, you can do these things and you can care more about like saying like transmitting this, this, this information yeah. to, to the audience. And let's say like you build the web page, you build your, you start building your social media presence. How should she start? And with what? With doing selling, that? like how she put herself in the market. Ah, the, well, but you 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 begin at the, at the beginning and, and before actually uh -huh. before getting all the stuff. Actually, uh -huh. when you're building the, your own persona on social media, you already can do that. It's a parallel process. Yeah, as, at the same time that you yeah. you also like kind kind of like the first thing is like building your web page. Uh, I mean, like once that you have already like something to sell. You start like with your web page at the same. Oh, actually, it cannot start at even like when you are looking for the furniture. Yeah, it's, that's, that can be like the journey. Like I'm, I'm in Sweden because that that shows this. This, for example, I would like that. Like it's me going to the shops, checking the furniture myself. Yeah. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not like in the end. You know, I know what I'm selling to you because I have been there. I'm your. I'm your proxy buying directly from the shop. Yeah. I go there for you. I'm your assistant in that. So I think that the, this is where the, the journey starts start. Like, yeah. Like, and also, okay. you, you can sell a small furniture at the beginning. Yeah. Also, if you want to start, if you want to get also background, you can start selling small stuff. Let's say you can start here in Poland. You don't need to go to, to Scandinavia. Because yeah. at least you know there is been touch. There's like I mean, here. like if if you cannot like like always we do like if you cannot do exactly what you plan, you can try to go cheaper, and redefine a little bit what you want and what you said like yeah in, instead of doing if if you see like the logistic to go to Sweden and do that, it's not you can do it in a smaller scale in in Poland and actually it's the same model but only in Poland. There is yeah. a shop. There is a shop really close to my place uh, for my apartment in the. In the streets, um, that is basically Scandinavian design. Yeah, and they have they have more things. They have not only furniture, but they have some small furniture. It's also checking checking those things and just maybe you can see if they are something broken or something like that. They have there. Just try to try to find something, small things, small pieces, and also having the process of restoration or maybe not restoration, but just. Reselling things, it would be small things would be also interesting. Yeah, so yeah, I think that what I, what I will do is first build a web page, not not publishing, and then in the moment that I go to Scandinavia to start seeing places, documenting my trip, and in this same trip, let's say I go to one shop and I see already like some furniture that I like, yeah. I will just 
take the picture yeah. and put them on the on the web page already. Yeah. Uh, and also, I, I'm thinking about, for example, uh, let's say, um, it's also important to have more offer at the end. I think, uh, at least in my in my point of view, let's say you're selling furniture, but also people who are selling furniture. On, uh, I remember when when there, there was a time when I was like, uh, uh, when I was studying art, and I I was obsessed by shops, by furniture shops. Okay. And uh, in the school that was going in, in the in the art school I was going, uh, there was in the in the rich area of the of Barcelona, and lots of lots of really expensive and really like uh, crazy. Uh, really cool uh, furniture there, and they were not only selling furniture; they were selling also um, rocks, decoration, uh, different small things. That because at the end, what they were doing is combining them, be, combining the thing. Let's say I'm gonna build, I'm gonna sell you this super expensive table, mm -hmm. but also you can see on the shop. The, the set with a really nice rock, the design, the lamp also, what was really like, you know, you can also sell different stuff. You don't yeah. need to really need, obviously, it's a different target because it's a shop, obviously, so they need to show. Yeah. But I'm thinking about like, you can also build this uh, from small things. Yeah. From a lamp, from a, a, a small chair. Then, then I will put it as a second stage, for example, because that can be good if you have the money. And if this will, for example, let's say, you start with the import business and it's already giving you enough money so you can reinvest, that can be the second phase. To yeah. invest in a place in Krakow that you can, or in any other city in Poland that you can showcase. Yeah, and also, yeah, that will be like in the future. No, But I'm talking about like more about like, uh, like you can start selling... Uh, a chair or a small uh, a small table or something like that. Mm -hmm. To you go there, as you said, you go there. You um, kind of like you are filming the, the journey. You are doing this, 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 the, all the process. And instead of taking photos, yeah, you can take photos, but you can maybe buy some small stuff. If you can, the the problem with that is like the transportation will cost more or less the same, regardless. Of if it's a, I mean, like if it's very small, no, but let's say transportation of a chair is gonna cost just a little bit less than transportation of a sofa, and a sofa you can sell it for a lot more price. So, in that case, I will try to go at least at the beginning for bigger stuff because transportation is gonna, it's a pain in the ass. Eh? What? It's a pain in the ass. Yeah. So that's the thing. Like in the end, it's not gonna be very profitable for you to transport, let's say, uh, one chair. Yeah. It's not, it's because not, the, yeah. the the margin. That's true. So you are you want to sell the whole set. You have, you want to sell to sell like six chairs and one table, and yeah. it's a it's a bundle because the transportation cost is gonna grow a little bit. But the margin grows exponentially. Yeah. So selling small things, unless it's like really sm very small things that you can take with you in the first trip in a in a luggage, just because you want to start selling, that will be okay. But I don't think that this is the, exactly the target because the the smaller the thing, the most is gonna cost. So you need to go big with that. Yeah. Uh, you need to go sofa. You need to go sets. Uh, Tables, yeah, uh, yeah. That's that's this is what I what I think. Like big uh, wardrobes, the bigger, the better, because yeah. this is where you can really charge. Yeah, like you can sell something big, and transportation is gonna cost you anyways the same, but your margin is gonna be a lot bigger. Yeah, you know? yeah, that's true. But it, um, okay. I mean, we talk about a lot of stuff uh, in this blog. We talk about marketing. We talk about the, the branding, how it's going to be the website. We talk also about the operations, yeah. which is like uh, really also really big. How to do that? The leadership, what 
what you need to be mm -hmm. and how you need to be to be able to do that. And a little bit on the client relationship with the with the product, which is like uh, yep. uh, is also important. Um, yeah, we are going to. I mean, I think it's good to finish the blog here. Uh, we did a lot of uh, really useful information, I think. So let's go for the next one. Will be like uh, I would like to talk about the the future recommendations and the recap. Yeah, we can everything. we can do just a because I think that we have gone through a lot of information. We can go to a recap, make a good summary of all our recommendations, how to start, how to scale, and how to run. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So see you in the next one. See Bye. You. Hello, Nico here from the podcast Business Noir. And then I would like to show you a little bit more about the reviews because we think it is very important having reviews and feedback from the real protagonists, which are the people who are doing the podcast with us. And we were analyzing all the cases and everything. So we thought it would be interesting to see their own reviews. So we asked them if they could film a video about uh, their opinions and, and what they think about our work and um, the feelings and if they, it was useful, the information. So uh, we compile a couple of videos about them and um, here they are. <laughs> Hi Business Noir, it's Anna and I want to express my sincere gratitude to uh, become your first guest for your first episode. Uh, you know, I was riding a bicycle once I was listening to this uh, uh, podcast, first podcast, and I was so happy and overwhelmed with my happiness. So I just stopped and I was walking and I was smiling all the time. I was walking uh, <laughs> to, to the supermarket because I just couldn't stop uh, being happy about uh, how you did your job, how you highlighted the business concepts I have, how you motivated me to uh, perform these baby steps to um, grow my business from uh, nothing to something, something good. And I want also notice that the atmosphere of your podcast, this, this noir atmosphere is amazing, guys. You have to do it. Please inspire more people. And uh, thank you very much again. <laughs> You're always welcome to be my guests as well. <laughs> Hello everybody, hello Nico and Borja. I would like to say a big, big, huge thank you for your podcast uh, that's taking my case and giving me so useful knowledge, advices, your professional point of view. I took notes, I will think and rethink about everything again and again. Thank you very much because the most important thing that I took from your podcast that I'm the person who is zero at business and I really don't know the first steps how to start and it was very useful for me that you give me instruments information your point of view it helps me a lot to understand the whole picture the future and what is going on right now what I can do at the beginning small steps and what I can do in future when I decide to grow so thank you a lot. Wishing you and your podcast all the best. Thank you. Okay, so welcome back um, to the blog number three and last one. This one is going to be short, shorter than, than, mm -hmm. than the other ones for sure. And well, we want to um, start thanking to Cluster co-working. Yeah. Uh, we are recording again on Cluster because uh, we have a very nice meeting room Yep. here one of the conference room that they have and uh, yeah we are like really happy about yeah. the collaboration with them and because they are really kind and really like yeah we, uh, we can really recommend the place because they treat you very well and for us it's all been like good stuff always giving solutions and very happy to collaborate so thank you very much to to the to damian and the the cluster guys because it's, yeah. it's great to have this space yeah damian and camila thank you very much <laughs> <laughs> uh okay let's go for the last block this is going to be shorter mm -hmm. because we yeah. talk about a lot of stuff yeah and i think is uh but this is the cool thing about that about the, these these blocks because we can just also uh, adapt at, at jazz on the road yeah. yeah exactly okay so let's talk about the future and the recommendations that we can have 
on also the what she can do. Uh, let's go for the, the recommendation. Start low, yeah. grow with time. The she's a, she already has the idea of starting from like a long journey. Let's say, yeah, she has already the mindset. Yeah, that's that's perfect because yeah, she has like a lot of time, and if you brew uh, slowly, things they they go better. So the first recommendation, as we said, since it probably she doesn't have like this great uh, money to invest at this moment of time, yeah. start uh, low with this. Like the first thing, go there, go to the place, mm -hmm. find the uh, find the place, find the people, and make it a journey. And in the end, you know, make it it's something between fun and business, yeah. which is great. Yeah. She can document that, and it will like provide this kind of feedback, you know, like this synergy that you are going there, you are already making the business, but already this journey, it's something that you're using to boost your your brand. Yeah, so exactly. It, this is the first recommendation, like uh, go for it. You will need anyway some investment at the beginning to go to the, to the trip. It's, it's not a big deal and it's investing in an experience and it's gonna just make you grow. So yeah, the the other recommendation we would like the the no recommendation the step I would say is uh, have a business plan. Yeah. Okay, business plan. How we can make a business plan in this case will be like not really complicated because you is is an idea that it needs to grow and you need to like a lot of time. But it's also let's say because sometimes it's scary. When you hear, tell, talk about that, oh, business plan. Yeah. Well, what the fuck is this, right? Yeah. And but at the end, it's just something that is put the things in order, mm -hmm. and to not forget anything. And remember, all the plan that you have at the beginning, it can change. It sh it will change. It not. It, it can. Yeah. It will. It will change. It will change. But it's nothing. It's not the Bible. It's not exactly. the Bible that it all oh, is like that. It's just like. Don't get so so. Focus on having a perfect plan at the fir at first. Your plan is just a quick steps that you more or less follow. But your plan is never gonna go according to your reality is never gonna go according to your plan, and that's absolutely okay. Nobody that is successful started, or almost nobody started like having like hundred percent clear what they want to do. But they need to start from point. So. Yeah, uh, your business plan, it's something easy at the beginning. You don't need to, like, first of all, use ChatGPT for that uh, or any other artificial intelligence tool. It can help you. But basically what you need in your business plan at the beginning is what is your uh, your idea of business? What is in your scope? What is not in your scope? I mean, like, you're selling furniture, you're not selling candies. Yeah. That's easy peasy. And some deliverables in a, in, a, in a timeline. I want to do this in this specific time so, for example, the, in the first three months, I'm going to go and my target is something that you can control. You cannot control closing deals. You cannot set as a target, I need to uh, uh, close 20 deals. But you can set as a target, I need to visit 10 secondhand shops. Yeah. And make sure that you follow that. And little by little, this is something that you can start doing. Then your next target can be... Uh, post three times per week on Instagram. Uh, renew your LinkedIn account. Uh, build your web page. Learn uh, SEO. Uh, learn, you know, all that kind of stuff. This is all in your scope. This is part of your business plan. Make it in a, la in a timeline and go for it. Yeah, exactly. And to organize a little bit the processes, the processes that you're going to need in the future and what you have, the resources that you have now, the resources that you will need in the future. Mm -hmm. And just this is going to be super helpful to understand what you have in your hands, right? And that will be the, the second recommendation, yeah. I would say. And the, the connections, connections that are the other recommendation is like start, keep, keep taking it, uh, having an eye on the market. Yeah. Uh, try to contact and contact other people, competition competitors, and try to understand what they do. Shops, um, how much it cost here, for example. Make a, mm -hmm. a um, let's say, for example, I don't know, make a list of products. Yeah. 
ideal products. Let's say yeah. you go to a shop and this, uh, how much is, uh, it, could, it could cost. And once you got mm-hmm. in the business, you will see w- how much they are charging for, yeah. this, for, this, for this furniture and this furniture that you saw yeah. when you were doing the research. Basically, if you want things to happen to you, you need to be in the right place and yeah. you never know what is the right place. So the best strategy is be in many places. <laughs> exactly. Uh, go, uh, if there is a furniture fair, go there yeah. and speak with people. You don't need to have anything in mind. You don't need to sell anything. You just need to get contacts because by speaking with people, you will realize that there is somebody doing something similar or something, somebody that would like to associate with you or somebody that has the money and finds your idea great and then you can go in another direction. But be in places, be in business meetings, uh, go to secondhand fairs, go to secondhand uh, to furniture fairs, whatever that it's related to what you're doing, you go there. Yeah, totally. Be in places. And the the other recommendation I would say, like, if you want to begin something, I mean, you have to have the mindset for that. Yeah. You need to change the mindset. I mean, it's not a game. If, at the moment that you you have the idea and you want to do it, it's not a game anymore. Yeah, it's something that you have to take seriously, and for that you not only need to have a business plan and you have a, a logistic uh, a network or whatever. It's also changing your mindset that you are responsible to do something. Yeah, and you need to change a lot of things that you that you do. Um, if you want to be your own, your boss, if you want to be uh, successful or what you want to do, um, you need to change your mindset yeah. to to be like uh, responsible of more things that you, you, yeah. you are thinking. And, and run away from magic formulas. Yeah. Like yeah. it doesn't work. Like the, the formula is consistency, hard work, and be passionate about what you do. You need yeah. to enjoy what you're doing. And if you enjoy that... Mm, is, everything is easier. It's easier and probably you will have more chances of success. And if you don't success, you will get some skills in your journey that will serve you in your next adventure. Yeah. So it's only, it's a win-win situation. Exactly. And uh, that's why we're doing the podcast. <laughs> exactly. This is exactly how this started. <laughs> because we don't know what's going to happen in the future, but we, we are having fun. Yeah. We, are, we are, I don't know, we are challenging ourselves because yeah. it's really good. And we're we have... helping some people. Yeah. So it's yeah. good. Learning on the journey, everything. And for recommendations, I wouldn't say anything else. I mean, it's a really good start. You have a lot of information on this podcast, in this episode yeah. about what is this, uh, what we what we're thinking, and uh, I think nothing else. I mean, the it's basically like just keep in mind all the all the things that we we said yeah. and explore. At the end, is something that in in this episode is one hour and a half or something like that. It's not enough. Yeah. To give, uh, to, to be like totally, totally like true and consistent on that, but it's a starting point. Exactly. And um, yeah. Mm. Um, I think that that's it. Like I think that we we got like a really good journey, many ideas mm-hmm. that she can follow. It was a very interesting topic, totally different of what we have done in the previous episodes. So mm. I think it's very really unexpected for me. I was, uh, yeah, as I, I told you before, uh, before the the beginning of the third block, mm-hmm. um, I wasn't expecting having so much information and so knowledge about this, how yeah. to deal with this kind of business. And um, I think we will be closing very, very, and in a, in a few minutes the episode, but uh, I want to uh, talk about the website. Uh-huh, yeah. I would like to talk about the, what we have in Placebo Paradox, who is producing the podcast. Um, we have a lot of things. Uh, we are growing every day and uh, learning a lot of things about that. We are checking <clears throat> uh, the market. We are doing like uh, different kind of services, like website design, uh, business mentoring, obviously. Um, we have uh, content creation, we have social media management, and we are growing every day in how, how, what we can offer, what we do, and the clients that we have. So if you want to check our website, I will give you mm-hmm. here the, the address and also on the links. We also, we were putting on the description box on all the, 
all the um, partners and links from other p uh, useful things that we, we, we do and we have. We are preparing a workshop, will be like uh, very soon and uh, in Krakow. And, um, and I think nothing else. Uh, thank you for, I mean, if you came, if you arrived to this point, thank you for mm -hmm. listening. You are the, mm -hmm. the chosen one. You are the chosen one who are like, uh, uh, we, we love you already <laughs> for being here. And, but honestly, thank you very much. And we are growing every day. We are learning about a lot of things and, um, And I think nothing else. And just we will be posting more stuff, more news. We will be doing more, more content on social media, and mm -hmm. and we will like, uh, yeah, we will do yep. some stuff. Uh, if you like what we do, remember to subscribe. It's very helpful for us. Uh, follow us on on our socials, uh, in Instagram or LinkedIn. We're very happy to add you to our network if you have any question if you would like your business case to appear in one episode as well contact us in our socials uh, email the web page whatever we are controlling everything and that's it just wishing a lot of good luck to Marcelina and I hope that uh, in some years when we are like stupidly rich we can buy her very exclusive Furniture from Scandinavia. Exactly. That's <laughs> that's the best wish ever, I think. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Okay. Thank you, people, for being there. Thank you very much. See you in the next episode. Bye.